The high Peruvian Andes run the full length of the country and effectively divide it into contrasting strips. On the east, the mountain slopes fade into the great jungle plains of the Amazon. On the west, the coastal strip is a long, vast desert, but it contains Lima, the capital, and other towns in the transverse valleys which are watered by Andean streams seeking outlets to the sea. Much of the Andes is above the timberline, but llamas graze in the high pasture lands, and agriculture is possible on the plateaus and in the mountain valley. East of the Andes, the forest growth is heavy, and on the plains of the upper Amazon, the jungle is so thick that from the air, only the larger rivers can be seen. The barren west coast desert is a startling contrast. Mountain spurs run into the Pacific. The pounding surf carves out bluffs. The winds whip the sand into roving dunes. However, streams originate in the rainy mountains and cut their way to the Pacific. In their flat valleys, life is possible. Barren sands plus water equals rich crops. This is the formula for the West Coast Desert. The barren sands are rich in minerals, since no warm rains have leached the soil. With controlled irrigation, the desert becomes rich farmland. This lesson was learned centuries ago and still applies today. Not far from the present town of Trujillo are the ruins of the ancient city of Chan Chan, built by the Indians several centuries before the coming of the Spaniards in 1532. It covers 11 square miles with buildings, enclosure walls, pyramids, streets, reservoirs, and the remains of irrigated gardens. Walls of these early buildings were decorated with relief clay arabesques in textual patterns. Some of the pyramids had terraced sides, and these too were ornamented, but with designs of fantastic birds. In some places, ugly bricks were arranged in checkered wall patterns. In other places, the falling debris has covered many of the wall designs. In Inca times, the graves were circular pits, the burials in flexed positions. Traces of the original cloth wrapping are found, and the burials are accompanied by the implements needed for the journey to the land of the dead. In far earlier times, the Mochica, or early Chimu peoples, buried their dead in extended positions in well-made rectangular graves. Niches were constructed in the grave walls for the ceramic vessels. The graves were carefully covered, sometimes with poles, sometimes with adobe bricks which formed arched roofs. Pottery vessels were made especially for burial purposes, and from their modeled and painted designs, much can be learned about the life of the time. The Larco Herrera Museum at Chiclin contains one of the best collections of these early archaeological specimens in the world. Room after room is lined with pottery vessels excavated in the graves of this region. The oldest vessels are from the so-called Kupiznike or Chavin period, but still show remarkable modeling. The skillfully modeled vessels of the Mochica period are so realistic that they are justifiably called portrait jars. A chief is represented seated on his throne. Some figures combine human and animal elements and undoubtedly represent deity. 
Feline fangs are typical of the gods. Supernatural beings are shown fighting each other. The houses portrayed in the model vessels are interesting because of their gabled roofs in a region of no rainfall. Animals, birds, and fish are faithfully represented. It doesn't require an expert to identify this as a duck. A hair washing scene is a sample of the detail of life recorded in the ceramics. Important individuals wore large earplugs, some of them inlaid with turquoise. Other earplugs were made of hammered gold. In 1535, the Spaniards founded Trujillo on the coast and the Indian civilizations faded away. The Spaniards introduced a new way of life, but one still based on the fertility of the rich coastal valley. Today, the town of Trujillo is still flourishing. Buildings are made of sun-baked adobe bricks, as in the past, but with the addition of carved wooden balconies after the fashion of Spain. Elaborately designed window grills exemplify the colonial Spanish art. Today, the coastal valleys of Peru are still devoted to agriculture. Controlled irrigation produces acres of sugarcane, cotton, rice, wheat, and grapes. Chiclin Hacienda is a typical sugar plantation of the north coast. The growing of sugar was put on a commercial basis in 1884. Sugar was for years the leading crop, and today is surpassed in importance only by cotton. The coastal valleys are ideal for sugar, and six crops can be harvested from a single planting. The cane is ground in local mills and then sent to the refinery. A sugar hacienda like Chiclin is a complete community in itself with houses and shops for the workers. Schools are maintained for the children as well as hospitals and dental clinics. Playgrounds are part of the education. Instruction is not limited to academic subjects. Folk dancing and singing are also taught. Adult sports are also encouraged, and the field is maintained for the favorite, soccer, called football. Enthusiasm and interplantation rivalry are great. At Christmas time, the central figure of the fiesta is Nuestro Señor de la Caña. The image is richly adorned with fine cloths and silver trinkets. The whole hacienda participates in this annual celebration. The fiesta is not altogether religious. For instance, there are always demonstrations by skilled riders on the hacienda's fine horses, which are of pure Peruvian stock, descendants of the steeds of the conquistadores. And then there are the dances in which the costumes and the steps reflect long-standing Peruvian tradition. This one had its origins long ago in the highlands of the Cusco region. Great urban centers have grown up on the desert coast of Peru. The capital city, Lima, is the largest and depends in large part on the coastal agriculture as well as on the mountain mines and the recent growth of industry. Parkways line the principal thoroughfares, for Lima is proud of its beauty. Today, 
the fertile coastal valleys are linked by the hard surface Pan American Highway, which runs the length of Peru. Nature made the West Coast a desert, but man has controlled nature and turned it into a beautiful and productive region. <laughs>